With you here on a Wednesday afternoon, it's 4.03. This is San Diego Sports Leader, Double X 1090. I was lucky enough back in the summer of 2007 when I was working with Philly Billy at the time, got invited. I forgot how that worked out. Uh, I think there was a travel group that planned something, and we helped promote it. And we were lucky enough that we went to Cooperstown, New York, and we watched Tony Gwynn, Cal Ripken Jr. get inducted into the Baseball Hall of Fame. And I'll tell you, being there, and, and you know, for people that haven't been there, and I'm going to guess that's the majority of people listening to the show right now, the majority of you have not been to Cooperstown, New York, for a Baseball Hall of Fame ceremony, although it certainly felt that way that day, that play, half of San Diego was there. I get why people are sentimental about this. I get why people are protective of this. And if you've never been, you know, maybe it, you miss out a little bit. And when you walk up and down the roads in Cooperstown and you see different Hall of Famers, I mean, here comes Goose Gossage, and, you know, here comes Whitey Ford. And, you know, you understand why people get very, very protective and sentimental and emotional about the Baseball Hall of Fame. And as a big baseball fan, I mean, I, I totally get that. So with the ballots coming out this week, we had a conversation yesterday with Pedro Gomez from ESPN, who is a Hall of Fame voter, and who talked a little bit about the difficulties in voting for this year's class, especially – the new names, the first-timers on the list, which include people who have been linked directly, indirectly to performance enhancers, and that includes Clemens and Bonds and Sosa. McGuire's already there, Palmero. Um, and, you know, we, get, and we all know what the storylines are. It's funny, Marty told me she called Tony Gwynn earlier today to ask if Tony had a couple minutes to come on the show, and Tony said something to the effect of, you know, what took you so long? I was waiting for your guy's call. So here he is, the Hall of Famer. And I, like I said, I was there, and, and I really appreciated that moment. It's the only time I'd ever been there as somebody who grew up on the East Coast. Here he is, Hall of Famer and the head coach of the Aztec baseball team, Tony Gwynn. Tony, good to talk to you. Darren Smith, thank you for your time. Darren, how you doing? I'm doing well. So you were waiting for us, huh? Well, I knew as soon as the ballots were coming out that uh, my phone would start to ring because uh, when Barry Larkin got inducted last summer, uh, after the ceremony was over, you know, the Hall of Famers get together. And we were, talk- we were talking about, you know, with the guys, with the names on this year's ballot, that there's going to be, this is probably going to be the most talked about Hall of Fame voting period ever. Maybe since the first one. Because the names on this ballot, there are, to me, there's at least seven guys that, uh, warrant serious consideration into getting into the Hall of Fame. But, you know, as you were talking about with Pedro Gomez, the writers feel so strongly about this this voting this year that they're going to do their homework. They're going to go around and ask and ask questions and talk to people because I think they're torn because, let's face it, Bonds, Clemens, Sosa, you know, those three guys are ambigio to me, are no doubt first ballot Hall of Famers but because of the PEDs. You really don't know how to attack this thing. And as a Hall of Famer myself, I really don't know how to attack it because uh, uh, that integrity clause in there is is probably this year more so than in any other year is going to weigh heavily into who gets in and who doesn't. Well, let me start with this. How glad are you that you're not on this year's ballot? (laughs) Right? I mean, who would want to be on this ballot this year? Well, I just heard Kurt Schilling on uh, on the news say he was glad he if he was going to be on the ballot. This is the ballot that he wanted to be on because he knew that in his heart that he you know played the game the right way and you know and he pitched you know he's proud of his numbers and you know proud of how he pitched because he believes and uh, as he was pitching he was pitching against guys who were breaking the rules who were cheating and so. Uh, but for me, I, I'm kind of glad I, I've gone past that point now, and I kind of get to sit back and observe because I think all of us are really interested in seeing how this is going to play out because, uh, you know, like I said, there's some names on this ballot that, uh, you know, 10, 15 years ago, man, there was never any doubt whether or not they were going to get into the Hall of Fame, and now there's there's some questions. You know, Tony, we've had other Hall of Famers come out and, and say it, and, and I have no goose, you know, a former teammate of yours has said it. Reggie, I mean, people know Reggie. He's, mm-hmm. he's never shy with his opinions at all. Uh, George Brett came out and said, you know, guys aren't going to like it if guys like Bonds and Clemens and Sosa get in. And, and you might see some sort of backlash. For you personally, if guys got in there or if any of these specific names got in there, I mean, would it would it be a, a something to protest for you as a member of the Hall of Fame? No, not for me. Uh, you know, you talked about 2007. There were 
65 Hall of Famers there to welcome me into the Hall of Fame. And, you know, I, I think for for a lot of people, I, I think there's this sentiment that, uh, you know, these guys in the Hall of Fame think they're holier than now, that, you know, that, and, and I'm not one of those guys who feels that way. I, I, I feel like, uh, you know, it's an error. I mean, we can't change the numbers. Things happen, you know, in the steroid era. There were guys that were, you know, accused of taking them, who people thought were taking them. And, you know, at some point, I think the way this year's voting, how, however it turns out, is going to have an impact on how people view the Hall of Fame here in the future. And so... Uh, I'm not the one who thinks that uh, you know, everybody in the Hall of Fame today is clean and that we did things the right way. I mean, you know, there's guys who smoked. I'm sure guys who took amphetamines. And heck, who knows? Maybe some guys who even did more than that. But uh, uh, Lons and Clemens' numbers are so good and they were so dominant. I just can't see how you can't acknowledge the fact that these guys were, were great players. And, you know, granted, you know, they are accused and have been suspected of, um, but it's, 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 in my mind, it's really hard to to say those guys weren't two of the best who have ever played the game. And you think that they belong, that they have a place in Cooperstown? I, 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 I kind of do right now. Um, like I said, I'm not, if they get in, I'll be there to welcome them. I might be the only one, I guess, but I'll be there. Uh, because I think uh, I think that's really important. Um, uh, but you know, I, luckily for me, I don't have a vote because I I would really be torn on it. But I can tell you, I've talked to four or five writers here in the last week who do have a vote, and I think are in the, feel the same way I do. They're kind of torn in which way that they vote because, uh, like I said, Clemens and Bonds' numbers are so dominant. Uh, what both of them were, you know, suspected of, and they have to weigh that, you know, against, you know, that integrity clause. And and, and I'm sure, like I said, I, I, I think as we get closer to January 7th or 9th, whenever they announce it, uh, people are going to be talking about it a lot. I mean, I love the Hall of Fame conversation anyway. I love, you know, the comparisons and, and things and who should get in and who shouldn't. But I think this – this year will probably be the most anticipated announcement in maybe since the first one. Talking with Tony Gwynn, Hall of Famer at San Diego Sports Leader, Double X 1090. You know, the thing that stands out to me, Tony, you mentioned Bonds and Clemens and their numbers, and, and who could deny that just from a numerical standpoint yeah. that they have a place there. But what worries me, and I don't want to sound naive, I mean, you know, I'm around it, Mm-hmm. But but I worry about guys who don't have links. You know, Bonds has been linked to this. Yeah. You know, he's served his time in court. Clemens has served his time in court. The Mitchell report, whatever people think about it, you know, that there is linkage there. Yeah. But I worry about guys you know, like like Piazza, like Jeff Bagwell. And, and yeah. I wonder what your thoughts are about guys who are only suspected of it without any sort of evidence, whether it's circumstantial evidence or not. I, I agree with that. And I think... Uh... And to go a little bit deeper, what about Jack Morris? You know, what about Lee Smith? What about those guys, Tim Reigns, who have been on the ballot, and now you have a class like this year's class with some, you know, mega stars in it. You know, how's this going to affect those guys? And, you know, it's again, it's, it's you know, they get to vote. You get to vote for 10 guys, and there's going to be over 600 people voting this year. So getting 75%. 75% of the vote with over 600 people voting, you know, it's tough enough as it is. But you throw in, you know, the specter of PEDs and suspicion, and you wonder how that's going to affect, you know, not only the guys who are on the ballot for the first time this year, but guys who have been on the ballot. You know, I think this is Jack Moore's 14th year uh, of being on the ballot, and I don't know. I don't know if it's going to help a guy like Jack or hurt a guy like Jack. I don't. I don't know. But again, you, you, you know, the hall is, uh, is like you said, it's a very special place. The guys who are in the Hall of Fame feel very strongly about, you know, preserving the game of baseball and making sure we move forward uh, in the right direction. But you know, one way or the other, I think this year's vote is going to have a huge effect on the hall. 
and how they do things here in the future, one way or the other. And, uh, you know, last, last year's conversation was pretty lively. <laughs> I've been going back for, you know, five years, and, you know, when the ceremony's over and you're sitting in that room and you're having dinner, guys aren't eating, believe me. They're in there talking about the game and talking about, uh, and, and last year's case, talking about the guys who were going to be on the ballot this year. So it'll be interesting. It's going to be interesting to see what happens. Do you think most guys, I mean, when you sit around with the Hall of Famers, and by the way, I would pay a lot of money to just be a fly on the wall when you guys are having that conversation. I don't mind telling you that, Tony. But do you think that our, our most, is it split? Do you think most Hall of Famers feel one way or the other about this class? I think it's, uh, well, I can only speak about the guys that, who, who sit at my table, and uh, it's pretty lively. And it's, I, I would say it's 80-20 against. Uh, you know, we do talk about, uh, uh, you know, those guys who weren't suspected, but, I think being suspected is almost almost like you know, like people thinking that you have. And uh, uh, again, it's uh, these guys they feel pretty strongly about the integrity clause, and that's one that uh, I think a lot of us take a lot of pride in. You know, guys who feel like they've done things the right way and gone about the business the right way, and and some guys are just Dead set against anybody getting in who, who's, you know, had any kind of connection to it at all. And the way the voting has gone for guys like McGuire and Palmero, that's exactly what's happened. They, you know, they've gotten, you know, twenty five percent of the vote that really hasn't changed one way or the other here in the last uh, five years. Because honestly, I when, when I retired, I thought Cal Ripken. Martin McGuire and I were going to have a real shot at going in together. But, uh, you know, as we've seen, that hasn't happened here in the last five years. You know, Tony, I, I think, and, and you know, let me explain this. I mean, I love Goose Gossage. Goose, Goose comes on the show. He's a former teammate of yours. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, we love Goose. Goose Goose can be a little crazy sometimes. I mean, Goose, you know, he, he doesn't like the modern-day closer and, you know, issues with Hoffie and issues with Rivera. So yep. you know what you're getting. It's generational. But I, I think what I'm hearing from you, Tony, is – you played against these guys. You yeah, know, the, I did. the other generation didn't play against them, so it's easy for previous generations to look down their nose and say, well, Bonds and Clemens and Sosa and whatever, whereas you played against them. And I wonder if that changes your role or if your opinion then stands out because they're all contemporaries of yours. Well, I, I, I know in my case, you're absolutely right. I played against a lot of these guys. And, you know, when I was playing against them, I thought, you know, this guy's going to be a Hall of Famer. That's you know five years after he retires, and and so yeah, my thought process probably is a little bit different than guys who didn't play against these guys. But uh, you know, I I would like to think that my opinion of guys is not going to change once my generation of guys kind of goes through, and you got the next generation of guys coming in. But uh, uh, yeah, a lot of guys definitely <laughs> they feel strongly against guys getting in where, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm more open, you know, I, 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 I kind of think he Rose should, should get in, but I don't think he's going to get in. And, you know, I kind of feel like Bonds and Clemens and, and Biggio and Piazza all have legitimate cases. Um, but in, you know, in three of those guys cases, there's suspicion or whatever. And I think the writers are going to, Make a point. That's kind of what I think is going to happen. But you know, if, if those guys don't get in, we're still going to be talking about it. And if they do get in, we're going to be talking about it for the next, you know, eight months until July. And uh, and again, it's it's a topic that we knew was coming. You know, we, we knew we were going to have to talk about. It. Uh, but uh, I guess what I'm saying is, I'm I'm good either way. You know, if guys get in. Hey, I want to be there to support them. If they get in, if guys. Don't get in, and hey, I, you know, I, I kind of understand why the writers feel the way they do because, you know, hey, the year I went in, there were more than a few, more than a couple of writers who said, I'm not voting for anybody from the steroid. Mm-hmm. So I kind of suspect that as we move forward, that's probably what's going to happen. But, you know, I'm seeing respected guys like Rosenthal and Kimmy Kirch and, and Buster Olin saying that, you know, as hard as it is for them to do it, they're going to vote for those guys. So, 
you know, I think we're all going to have to wait till January 7th to kind of see what happens. But I can tell you this, that day, my phone will be ringing one way or the other. So. <laughs> yeah, and you know Marty will be one of those ones calling yeah, you too, Marty, don't you? Yeah, you're right. You will. <laughs> No question. Give me. She probably called me the day before. Absolutely, to make yeah, sure that you're not going on any other shows. Yeah, just to set it up to make sure that uh, you, you guys get first crack. It sounds like Tony. What you're saying though is, is you know, even though you'd be good with it one way or the other, you think that that these guys are not going to get in this year. I think they're going. I think the writers are going to make a point. You know, and it's whether it's right or wrong because I we've seen it before, where that, that first year. That's kind of the penalty, you know. They're gonna they're gonna make these guys wait uh, before they get in. They're not gonna vote for them the first year. But you know, again, every year that it happens, that's why I think you know it's gonna change how people view the hall because if they don't get in, you know, I, I think some fans are gonna say, "How can you look at those numbers and say that that guy is not?" Uh, and it's gonna put some pressure, I think, on the hall to. to you know, and there are people going to ask them, you know, how are you going to deal with these guys if they ever do get in? And so, you know, unfortunately, it's or fortunately, it's it's one of the things that uh, kind of have to wait and see how this plays out to see what's going to happen. Well, I thought it was interesting and in what you told us about four or five writers calling you because Pedro Gomez said the same thing to us as a voter. That yeah. He is going to seek people like you out. And he did say you're one of the guys that he's voted for and he'll vote for Maddox and I think he said he'd vote for Biggio. But when these guys call you and, and they ask you, do you do they ask you if it, what your opinion is if you think guys no, have used, or do they, they think, they or do they want to know if you think they're Hall of Famers? That's that, yeah. First and foremost, do I think that they're Hall of Famers? And then, you know, you get into that debate that you can have. You can have a conversation with a writer, just talking about the game and talking about situations. Because I guarantee you, a lot of these guys who are who, who get a vote suspected. Way before it became an issue, because I can tell you, Lester Oldman, he started here in San Diego. He used to write for the San Diego Union, and six, seven years before this thing, you know, before it got to be a huge issue, he was, you know, you know, behind the scenes asking that question: Do you suspect? Do you think? Do you think this was going on? And you know, we're we're, we're players, but we're not stupid. We, you could kind of sense something was happening because the numbers were just kind of going through the roof but uh and i think that's what they're doing they're they're kind of doing their homework you know they're they're kind of asking that question they they kind of want to know what as a hall of famer what you think as a former baseball player what you think uh and again it's a hard topic to kind of discuss because i don't know what it's like to be on that side to be on that side where you you know you took peds and you got to see how much better you were because i you know I was just a punch and Judy guy, as I, <laughs> as I said in my speech. I was just a singles hitter, and I was pretty proficient at just putting the bat on the ball. So, you know, it, it, that thought never really crossed my mind because the type of player I was, it was about, you know, just hitting the ball 180 feet and, you know, running around the bases. So I don't know what that that, that feels like, but I suspect that uh, – I don't think, like, you try to get into the mind of a guy who, who you suspect, like a Mark McGuire, did he, did he think that by taking these steroids that he would ever hit 70 home runs in a year? I, I doubt it because all it did was draw extra attention to you. And, and the thing I keep going back to, the thing I, 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 I kind of struggle with is the fact that so many minor leaguers are getting busted taking steroids, and it really hadn't helped them. You know, they hadn't gotten to the big leagues. It hadn't helped them put better numbers up. Uh, you know, that, just the art of going out there and making it happen every day, day in and day out, is still a very difficult thing to do, whether you do or you don't. And, uh, and again, that's, you know, these are the types of things that you talk about with these guys because, you know, they, they want to weigh every single option, every single thing that they can to to kind of sit down and come up with a decision when they write down whatever number of names they write down on that ballot. Are you torn at all as a college coach, you know, as somebody who deals with it not only as a Hall of Famer and somebody mm-hmm. who, who had the career that you've had, but as you torn as a, are you torn as a college coach 
that players who, who likely have done something that was against the rules are going to get rewarded with enshrinement in the Hall of Fame. I mean, is that tough for you in your role as, as the coach of the Aztecs? It really is. And I asked my guys, you know, when the, when the, uh, I had to go back to Louisville a couple of weeks ago because they honored me as, a, as one of their lifetime achieve, achievement guys. And, uh, and they asked me, you know, who's on the ballot this year. And I, I went through the names, Ron, Clemens, Sosa, Vigio, Piazza, Schilling, and there's a whole bunch of more guys on there. And to a man, pretty much, they said, well, you know, he's not going to get in. He's not going to get in. He's not going to get in. And I said, why? Because he cheated. And I said, well, what if you were suspected of cheating, but there's never been any proof? No, I'm not going to get in. And my guys are, you know, I think pretty liberal thinkers, but they to almost to a man shot that down. So. I do kind of feel guilty as a coach. We talk to these guys about doing things the right way and going about your business the right way, and and uh, and yet here I am, kind of right on the fence, you know, for these guys who, you know, were suspected of not doing things the right way. And uh, uh, but you know, I, I I try to be as honest with them as I can because I I tell them all the time this game is is really not one that you ever master. You know, you could get you can get good at it. And, and have success with, you know, anytime you're still going up to the plate and failing seven and eight, or six and a half times, uh, every 10 times up, you know, it's, 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 it's relative, you know, how much would you say you're successful? You're still making more outs than you're, you're having success. So, so yeah, it's, it's, that part was, uh, kind of eye opening too, because yeah, they, they, <laughs> they shot down a lot of guys before I could get their names out of my mouth. Well, really interesting. Well, Tony, always, always appreciate it. And by the way, it's not everybody that can come on this show and say, when you fail six and a half times out of ten, most people would say that's like seven and a half times out of ten. Well, yeah, <laughs> it, was, it was actually more than that. It was like, or less than that. But, yeah, uh, but, but not many people would come on and say that, knowing what your average is. You know, on that, real quick, you know, this whole debate about the AL MVP, you have a lot of people who dump all over batting averages. Somebody who is known for average and and – Everybody's saying it's so overrated. Are you taking offense to some of these these modern day conversations about statistics? Darren, absolutely, I take offense to it because if it's not that important, then why aren't more guys doing? It? You know, I, I and, and maybe that is the reason why. Maybe you know, maybe we put so much emphasis on hitting the ball out of the ballpark and hitting with power and driving in runs uh, that you know. Batting average isn't as important, but uh, uh, you know I, I've been retired now for twelve years, and there there aren't any guys out there doing what I was doing, so I, I still feel good. <laughs> I still feel good about that. But uh, yeah, the cybermetrics guys, they you know, and they're, we're getting all, they're getting a lot of play now, but it was that way, and you know, in the early nineties too. And, and, uh, you know, the debate rages on. And that's, to me, that's the great thing about this game is that you can look at it a hundred different ways, you know, and the objective is, is still, regardless of the numbers, is to help your team win because that's, that's what you're out there to do is to help your side win. And, you know, unfortunately for me, I didn't win any world championships, but uh, we got there twice and very proud of that. And, uh and I guarantee you, you know, teams are always looking for a guy who can get on base, steal a bag, score a run, hit with guys in scoring position. Those, you know, those guys are still put at a premium in this game, and and I I suspect always will be. Tony, always appreciate it. We'll we'll talk to you the first week of January. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Darren, tell Marty give me a call. You got it. Thank All you, right. Hall of Famer Tony Gwynn. There.